Hello and welcome to Mountain Valley Today. I'm here with uh, Dr. Jason Barnett. We're going to talk some this afternoon. But let me say thank you so much for joining us today on Mountain Valley Today. We hope you'll join us again. Uh, you can watch any show that we've had before on mountainvalleynewspaper.com. We're also uh, carried on WFPA 1400 on Thursday evenings and also on Farmers Telephone Television. Uh, Channel 6. So we hope you'll join us and tell your friends about us. So, Dr. I'm going to call you Jason. Is that okay? Yeah, perfectly fine. Uh, I've known Dr. Barnett for a long time, and there's a few stories I can tell. Now, we'll have to see if you can keep <laughs> me from saying those. I don't know. But uh, we have a long history of knowing each other. We actually go to the same church. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't say who sits closer to the back, but. <laughs> but it's and, me. And we'll, it is him. I've got two young children, you know, occasionally you got to get out. <laughs> occasionally you have to get out, that's true. But anyway, let's start today. And let me just say congratulations on the uh, primary election. Uh, what would you like to say to the viewers about that experience? And uh... Well, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mountain Valley News for all their, uh, their coverage. I think they did a great job. Uh, a few weeks back, I came on and recorded a TV show here with you guys, and, and I thought you did a very good job of interviewing myself and Mr. Taylor and allowing us the opportunity to uh, express our ideas, express our thoughts to the viewing public. Uh, you know, when you, when you campaign, you know, the biggest thing you need to do is get in front of people. Uh, you need to share your ideas, share your thoughts, your visions for what you want the school system to be. And, uh, you know, this was a great opportunity for me to, to sit down here with you and share some of those ideas and visions and, and for the viewing public to be able to watch that on, as you mentioned, on 1400 AM, listening to there, of course, on uh, FTC TV and on the online. And I shared that on my Facebook page that we had a lot of people watched it and checked it out. And so we had a real positive feedback from that. So I thank you guys for extending those opportunities to, to both candidates and, and allowing that a whole lot. Uh, so off the bat, I definitely want to thank you guys for that. You know, uh, I also want to definitely thank the, the voting uh, populace. Uh, it meant a lot to me. You know, when you sit there, all, you work for seven and a half months leading up to an election. And on election day, there's really nothing you can do from 7 a.m. <laughs> to 7 p.m. You just sit there and, and you know, you're nervous and, and, and there's really nothing you can do. And people are voting on you across the whole county. And... You're just sitting there waiting and hoping they're hoping they're voting for you and hoping they're putting some trust and support in, behind you, and then you know, but you're waiting there all day long. And there's just really nothing you can do. But then, about seven ten, seven fifteen, things start coming in, and and uh, it's created a very exciting time. And I was very pleased by the outpouring of support that we had. Uh, people across the county, we were very fortunate in every community to have support, and that was. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we reached out to every community. We wanted to reach out to every town, uh, community, set in homes or coffee shops in every area and, and try to earn their support and get that. And we were very fortunate that we did that. We wound up winning every box. And, uh, you know, I think it just goes to people that they shared our vision. They shared our ideas. They, they shared a vision for what they want their schools to be. They want us to be uh, very progressive in, a, in, in what we do and, and try to, you know, do things a, a little bit different. I think it... You know, it wasn't just my vision. Uh, it became our vision. It became the people who voted for us. It became our vision. And that's where I believe we had some, some good support, and that helped us out. Now, one thing, you came out really early that this was your plan and this was your goal. I don't remember exactly when you uh, announced your candidacy. Do you recall? July 13th. Okay. So you do remember. Yeah. Is there a special day, or you picked that day out of random? or? Well, it, we when we sat down and, and decided, we... Uh, we didn't. It, there really no, wasn't anything magical about that day. Uh, we just wanted to do it a few weeks before school started back. Uh, we wanted to get in about two to three weeks before teachers came back to the work day. That way we could go ahead and launch uh, what we did, make sure that we had time those weeks before, leading up to school. Because I knew once school started, I couldn't go to coffee shops at lunch or breakfast. or I had to be at school because I owe it to the students at Collinsville School to make sure that I'm there and doing my job to the best of my ability. I owe it to them to do that. And so I wanted to announce a few weeks before school got started uh, so that I could go eat breakfast at a few places, eat lunch around, meet with people during the school day that otherwise I wouldn't have been able to do. So uh, there wasn't nothing, anything magical about that day other than it just gave us a few weeks to go out and, and do some preliminary, uh, you know, uh, campaigning. 
Well, I can say I've seen you everywhere. I All mean, right. I've been in Otter at a community meeting. I've been at sporting events and uh, the role that I have as a career coach, I've been a little bit everywhere across the county. What have you learned as you traveled around visiting different communities? Cause I don't know if you've been to all those places prior to when you were actually starting, but this opportunity, uh, this candidacy gave you an opportunity to get out and visit sure. a lot of different folks. Yep. So what have you learned and understand about DeKalb County during those visits? Well, you know, there's a lot of similarities among every community, but there's also every community has its own unique needs, its own unique uh, uh, wants and desires and that sort of thing. Uh, but it, people across the county are passionate about their schools. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in, uh, you know, if you're sitting in McDonald's here in Rainsville talking or if you're at the diner in Crossville or if you're at the Cabbage Bowl in Ida or any points in between. Uh, people are passionate about their schools. They want the best for their schools. They've got a unique needs. They've got unique wants, but they all want great schools and they want somebody who's willing to, to, to show up and listen to their needs and listen to what exactly they want just to, uh, to be accessible, uh, somebody that's accessible to them. And so that was one of the biggest things that I believe, you know, there's a lot of particulars that are specific about it, but when you really look at it, it all comes down to, they, being, you know, sitting down and talking to them and learning about their particular situation, their needs and wants. And so that's the biggest thing that I guess across the county people really want is they want to be heard and they want to be involved and they want you to come back and, and be a part of their community. They want you to be a part of them. And so that's one of the uh, moving forward. Uh, I want to continue doing that. And as if, if everything goes well and I take over as superintendent in January, one of the things I want to do is install some community meetings annually in every uh, school community that uh, you know and I want to make sure that I, I just as an individual not even on a formal level that I'm out in each uh, community regularly uh, and stop by and have a cup of coffee with the gentlemen that are eating uh, breakfast in the morning at their spot or go by the school talk to all the teachers uh, and, and hear what they desire what they need what they want and that's been the best part of it I, I, you know sitting down in coffee tables or, or, or dining room table tables and talking with people, there are things that have come out of this campaign that I've shared with people, or that people have shared with me, that if I'm elected, I'll implement and I'll do, because it was just some great ideas. And if I hadn't went out in that community, if I hadn't sat there, I would have never have heard them. Uh, but we did, we wanted to be very aggressive in terms of uh, going out and seeing as many people as we could. As I mentioned earlier, you can do, you can, you can do a lot of different things in a campaign, but at the end of the day, you got to get in front of people and you got to get enough people to, to, to believe, hey, this is the guy that, that can, has a great vision for our school or a great vision for our district. And, and I think he's the man that can actually go out and do it. And I see him working hard. Uh, just so many people say, if nothing else, I've never seen anybody, you know, campaign as hard as you are being out and working mm -hmm. as, as hard as you are. And we tried to do that. And so, you know, I think that was successful. Well, let me ask you, I, as you were talking, I was thinking about, you know, you said earlier how on the election day, you just sort of had to sit and wait. Yeah. Did you sleep well that night? Did you just like, oh, this is well, over for a while. I can rest for a minute. <laughs> Tuesday night, I was so excited that I did not sleep all that well Tuesday night. But <laughs> Wednesday night, uh, I fell asleep probably around 8.15 and got a really good night's rest and so I've slept well since then but yeah it, it, leading up to it there's so many thoughts going on but the, the night of the election I was so excited that I did not sleep well that night but yet the nights after I've slept very well okay well I, I, I know Leah very well and I know the kids are very excited and they yes. were probably glad to have you home for a little bit because I'm sure you've been on the run mm -hmm. and uh, uh, out seeing people and yeah. those kinds of things so I'm glad I guess they were really excited to have you home they were yesterday in our Sunday school class at church one of the the conversation was about time and how you know managing your time for your devotion for your family for for all the things that prioritize and that really hit, hit home with me because I, uh, in the campaign I have missed out on some things that I that I, I, I love spending time with my family and stuff and I always try to I uh, went to a seminar a few years ago with uh, Dr. Kevin Elko, and his thing is be where your feet are. You may not always have time, but if you're here, be here, be present wherever you are, and I want to try to make sure that I do that. I've tried to do that, and I'm always not as successful as I like, but that is something over the next few weeks we're going to kind of, you know, gear down a little bit and take a, a little bit slower on the campaign trail and uh, try to eat 
dinner with the family every night and make sure to take make the most of those times with that with our children. Listen, those kids are going to be grown before you know it. Don't know miss it. those opportunities. I know it absolutely. Well, um, you know, you were talking a minute ago as you were out visiting with different people and learning and hearing things. What are some things that you plan on uh, adding to your platform, or maybe you know, it's. To me, you can't just have a concrete, this is all right. I'm going to do. Right. It has to be an evolving process. Mm -hmm. So as you've been uh, campaigning, you've learned some ideas, what are your uh, goals and you decide to st move forward? Well, you know, when we announced we had basically, you know, five points under the expect more thing that we wanted, you know, communication, voice, uh, innovation of technology and resources, instructional leadership and vision. And those are kind of five, the five things, and, and they're, they're, you know, they're, they're narrow, but they're also a little bit broad, too. And I, I dare say every week throughout this entire campaign based on, uh, you know, it's not that we've tried to be wishy-washy or anything like that, but every week as we went, we've kind of fine-tuned and added to our platform. Mm -hmm. And so we want to, we're going to continue on with those same five points, but yet we've, we've, we've adjusted how we're going to communicate with people. We've adjusted, you know, some of the innovation of technology and resources. We've adjusted, we've adjusted some of those, and I think that's important because you have to have, you know, you can't always be changing your goal, but but you've got to be able to be flexible with how you pursue that goal. And so we're, we're going to kind of keep the same uh, platform as we move forward, but yet, you know, we always, uh, when there's new information and there's new conversations and, and things go on, we're, we're going to take all that into consideration because it's, it's very important. And uh, about that, taking on that information, one thing I'm very proud to say is, is every you know message, uh, even whether it be through an email, a phone call, or Facebook or Twitter, uh, you know we've responded to every single one of them, and I'm very proud of that. Uh, some folks have just been a congratulatory. Some folks, you know, have uh, a, lot, some, a concern or an idea, and, and I'm proud to say that we've responded to them, and that helps shape those ideas. You know, sometimes the best ideas come from just a couple people sitting around talking, and so. Uh, it's important to have those conversations, and we're, we're continually refining and refocusing ourselves as we, as we can improve and learn. Well, and I think your uh, use of social media has been a great uh, promotional tool, and uh, technology is something not to be afraid of, but figure out how you can use it to your advantage. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm very proud of what you've been doing with that, and I'm sure you've got a website you might want to share with them, yeah, come and look at our Facebook page. I encourage you uh, to all to, to stay contacted with our campaign. Uh, there for a while we were, uh, I think we were probably saturating the market, <laughs> maybe, but we're going to back off. But I do encourage you, please go check out my website. It's drjasonbarnett.com, drjasonbarnett.com. Uh, on Facebook, you can find me at Barnett for Superintendent. Uh, on Twitter, I'm at, at the uh, at Dr. Jason Barnett, the, at Dr. Jason Barnett. Uh, you can find me on any of those platforms. Of course, my email uh, is listed on all of them, but it's just Jason at drjasonbarnett.com. Uh, my cell phone, uh, I've made that number available, uh, and I've had many phone calls, and, and it's 256-717-3558, uh, and it's been really... Uh, it's been really good because people, they'll, they'll share an idea, but they also want to be respectful of your time, and they're proud that you took the time to answer it, but they, they, everybody's been very courteous and very respectful of your time, but they want to share what they have in mind, and I want them to do that. I wouldn't have given that out there if I didn't want uh, people to, to communicate with me in that manner, but that's been, that's been, that's been real good. And uh, uh, the night of the election, I got a little bit behind on my messages. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be able to say that. I did get a little bit behind there for a few moments. They were, they were coming in faster than I could uh, process. So it was like being blown up, is that what you're saying? It was being blown up, it was. Yeah, once, once about, uh, about 8 o'clock, 7.45, 8 o'clock, we realized that we were, uh, we were, we were going to end up winning the, the election and getting the nomination for the Republican Party. And, and people started figuring that out, and it, it, was, uh, it was overwhelming, the amount of support. I mean, I, I, I can't tell you how thankful I am uh, for the people that have gotten behind our campaign. You know, you, you, there's things that you can control and things you can't control, uh, but, but the people have really gotten behind us and supported us. And everybody who's liked a, liked a post, shared a post, commented on a post, or just talk to somebody out at the supermarket or where they work. You know that's important because, as I mentioned, you can only you can you can go about campaign a lot of different ways. But at the end of the day, you gotta ha you gotta be in front of people and or, or somebody's gotta vouch for you. 
and people have used their influence with their co-workers, with their families, with their friends to help say, hey, you know, this is a, a guy that I know, I think you should support him. And I cannot thank you, the voters, uh, enough for what you did for me uh, just this past Tuesday on March 1. In the days and weeks preceding that, they led up to it, I could not thank you enough. And it means a great deal to me. And, and by you going out and, and voting the way you did, <clears throat> I feel like I owe a debt to you. Uh, I feel like you, you got behind the vision, your vision, my vision became your vision, it became our vision. And so working through that, uh, you supported me and I think I owe a debt to you because you put your faith, you put your trust, you put your word uh, behind me and, and went out and talked to your friends, family, shared on Facebook. And I don't, that's not something I take lightly. I believe it's an obligation that I have to hold up to the, uh, to the things that I said and, and I, I talked to you about to the best of my ability. Right. Well, let me ask you a question. How do you think you're going to handle day one? I mean, you know as well as I do in the job as an administrator uh, or a classroom teacher, you are not going to make everybody happy. Oh, no. And uh, so, you know, I, I know uh, political life is this your first jump yes. into that. And if you're successful, uh, which seems if you have this kind of support in the primary, you're going to be successful or a very viable candidate right. in, the, in the fall. And if you're lucky to jump in there on day one, how do, you, how do you envision that? I mean, you can't put this much work into it and not have a vision right. of day one I'm excited about. Right. Well, one thing that has been very good as you mentioned, you're going to just I'll, I'll take this in a couple of different parts. You mentioned about you're going to make you're going to upset people. There's no doubt. But one of the best parts about this whole campaign is is I was out campaigning the last Saturday before the election, and there were two individuals that I came across that had interviewed for jobs with us, and they didn't get the job, and they talked to me a little bit and. Uh, as we had the conversation, I realized, and they said they were going to support me, and, and they basically shared the, why they were going to support me was the way that we treated them. We, uh, I was up front with them. I was, you know, showed, treated them professionally, courteous. Uh, I was, up, you know, honest with them up front, and they really appreciated and really respected how we handled them. And, uh, you know, I realized that at the end of the day, you know, my success as a superintendent is going to be based on how successful I allow or empower the, the, the people of the Cal County be the teachers, the work, support personnel, bus drivers, CMP, custodians, uh, aides. Uh, so it's not going to be just necessarily on me, but I, I realize that. Uh, you know, first day on the job, you know, I hope to, to, my goal in the first six weeks is I want to get in every classroom in DeKalb County. Wow. So that, that's a goal. I may not necessarily make it, but that is one of the first things I want to do is make sure that I want to, on day one, I want to get all the uh, leadership team together across the county, and I want to let them know that I'm working with them. We're going to work together. Uh, you know, these are the things that I expect of them, and I need to know what, exactly what you expect of me. How can we work together? Because, as I mentioned, my successes will not, uh, you know, uh, if I'm going to be successful, they have to be successful. Exactly. I cannot be successful if they're not. So the only way for me to be successful is for them to be successful. And so that's very important. So I want to make sure they understand, you know, what I expect of them, but also what they can expect of me, what they need from me to allow them to do their job to the best of their abilities. Uh, and then, of course, after I do that, then I want to go out and start meeting as many folks in the, in the schools. Uh, of course, I, and through the process, I've met so many teachers. Uh, but I want to let them understand, you know, we're here to work together. We're going to do the best job we can for DeKalb County. If you're willing to work and you're willing to do what's uh, put forth the best effort that you got, then we're going to be okay. We're going to be on the same team, and we're going to do great things together. Well, I think you said something very important there. As long as you express your expectations, then that's the way you've all, I've always done, and I'm sure you have too. You uh, express your expectations, and then the, you, you hold the kids accountable right. to that expectation. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think people are excited about having that communication sure. with you. Uh, and I think that's an awesome game plan to get started, yeah. get started well, with. People have to know what's expected up front from me and for them and everybody. That, that's always how we've done, handled everything at Collins. Well, you know, when we have uh, teacher observations, we gave them up front, you know, this is exactly what I'm going to look for. If I come in your classroom, these are the things I'm looking for every time. I'm not going to come looking for something that's, not, you know, this is this is what I consider to be best practices in your classroom instruction, and that's what I'm going to be looking for. And so they know that when we come in there, that's what we're going to be looking for, and I think that's just fair across, uh, across the county. I think that's a good model to continue to use. Of course, it's a larger scale, but I think that's 
uh, fair enough in the, in the best way to do it. Well, that sounds ex exciting and, and good. I know that I've worked with uh, Dr. Barnett before when he were a uh, uh, instructional coach mm -hmm. when you're at Plainview. And one of the things that I always swing in education, we ca I call it a pendulum. We might focus on this for a while, swing, swing over here. And one of the things we were working on is these uh, notebooks that we had that we were, everybody was freaking out. What, do you remember, do you remember those? Oh, I remember that. Really and so well. I remember you coming in and saying, look, it's not that hard. This is what we're looking for. If you can get this stuff in there, that's what we're looking for. It just calm the whole faculty down, mm -hmm. you know. I think most educators, from what I've been around 30 some odd years, yeah. <laughs> uh, most people want to do a good job. Absolutely. But Absolutely. they also want to know what's expected of them. It's just like the bus driver or the lunch uh, mm -hmm. lady or CMP worker uh, or the uh, janitor or the I should have said custodian, the custodian or the secretary or the teacher mm -hmm. in the classroom. We all want to know what's expected. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes different people have different expectations or they don't express it exactly. in a way that you can uh, be successful in meeting those. Well, I tell you, it's been uh, exciting to watch what you've been doing. And I, I don't want to belittle what you've done, but I know from my own uh life and when I started in a little bit of political life, I felt like I was just uh, this just regular old everyday person sure. to jump out of a, my dad was a Baptist preacher and I wasn't anything special, but I felt like I could be a little bit of help. And I wonder how you feel just, you know, this is, this is Jason, exactly. you know. I remember you in school mm -hmm. and now you've gone to school, you got a, a really good uh, education, you're coming back and giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. So how does that make you feel as growing up just a little kid here in, in town right. and you've... Uh... Well, that, that's exactly it. I, I am who I am. I'm Jason. I'm a, you know, my dad was a roofer. He had a roofing business. I grew up helping him some during the, during the summers and during the school year and the afternoons. Uh, you know, my mom, Karen, she grew up, uh, you know, around here in Rainsville. She went graduated from Plainview School. Uh, you know, I'm just everybody, I'm just who I am. And I think that really resonated with people because I couldn't tell you how many times uh, when you go in and they, they say, well, this is Dr. Jason Barney, they think that you may have a, uh, you know, I don't know, an arrogance or something mm -hmm. about yourself. But when I sat down and talked with them, they realized I was just one of them. I grew up the same way that anybody else did around here. Uh, and so, I, it, you know, I'm, I've been very blessed and very fortunate. I had a desire to continue my education. I knew that uh, once I got my master's degree, I didn't want to stop. Mm -hmm. I wanted to continue to learn. I wanted to continue. And so it never was about getting, you know, a, a certain title or anything about that. It was just about putting myself where I could learn as much as I possibly could. And But, you know, I'm just the same old person that I, ain't, I always have been. My friends that I've uh, hung out with in high school were the, were the, were the very people who went door to door with me uh, you know, on Saturdays and they were the same people who were at, with me at the courthouse on Tuesday night and they'll keep me in line. My mom, she's going to keep me in line for sure. <laughs> Mamas my, will do that, won't they? Exactly. They you know, that. my brother. And so, uh, you know, I'm just the same old guy that I always have been. I've been very blessed in my life. I've been very fortunate and I hope to do some good things. But as I mentioned, you know, I hope that I can allow people or empower, encourage people to do good things because as, as, as I've already said, I, on my own, I, I know I won't be able to do it, but I hope that I can bring some things to the table to empower and encourage and allow people to do great things. And then by them being successful, then I'll have uh, some level of success. But I'm just the same old uh, guy that, that uh, my teachers used to have to get on to back in the day and uh, worked at Lucky's Meat Market. I worked in Lucky's in the back of the meat market while I was going through college. I worked at a print shop when I was at Jacksonville State. Uh, running copies for people and stuff, and I'm the same guy, you know, just just uh, just a little bit, uh, just a little bit different place in life right now. A little older, a little gray hair. Exactly. Well, <laughs> yeah, my, and my daughter, she likes to point out that, Daddy, I see a little gray back there. You need to get that cut out. Yeah, <laughs> so I don't my know. daughter points mine out yeah. quite often too. Yeah. Well, I want to end this afternoon uh, talking with you today the same way we ended it before. Mm -hmm. um, you have an opponent on the Democratic ticket mm -hmm. and a really good guy. Sure. And uh, there are people who are going to watch this uh, and maybe they're sitting on the fence just like we right. talked about before. 
So how are you going to convince those people that are trying to decide between you and the other guy mm -hmm. which one I need to vote for? What would you like to say to them then help them sway them to mm -hmm. expecting more? Well, like I said, I want to thank you all for your initial support throughout this whole campaign. The seven and a half months leading up to March 1st election was overwhelming. I want to thank you for that support, the words of encouragement, the prayers, and everything you've done. As we move forward, uh, I just want to ask for the same thing I did as we did a few weeks ago. If you're still undecided or if you don't know exactly what you want to do this upcoming fall, I encourage you to go to my uh, Facebook, as I mentioned earlier, Barnett for Superintendent. Go to my website. Give me a call, like I mentioned, 256-717-3558. Uh, give me a call. I'm going. To, I'm going to be out knocking on doors again here in a, you know a little while. Like I said, we're going to take a couple weeks of downtime, uh, spend a little bit of time with the family. Uh, but I'm going to get back geared up here before long, and we're going to go around to all the the towns and communities and be as many events as we possibly can. And if you're undecided, I please ask of you. Give me a call. Uh, reach out to me in some way. Other that way, you can go be informed when you go to the poll. And if you're somebody who does know me, I ask that you go and share your ideas and share your thoughts with your friends and family. Uh, and, and I believe that I'll, I will, you know, I'm not making promises other than I will do my best uh, to provide the best educational opportunities and resources for our children here in DeKalb County. Uh, I'll work hard every day to do that. I'll work with all of our business leaders, our, our government leaders. I'll work with anybody who can, anybody that can support us in our mission to provide great schools in DeKalb County. I'm gonna do it. And so I that, but in order to do that, I have to have your support, and I do humbly ask for that in the November general election as we move forward. Well, Dr. Barnett, Jason, who I call sitting two rows behind me at church, we're <laughs> so certainly not that far back. <laughs> <laughs> not that far. I'm, I'm sort of back there with you. Uh, we're certainly glad you spent some time with us, and we hope you guys will share with your friends that they can come and watch this. Uh, episode of Mountain Valley today and uh, you can help people expect more with Dr. Barnett as he continues his uh, quest to be the next superintendent of DeKalb County. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope you'll join us again.